And we're back with another no-nonsense, no-intro guide to the boomsticks of Into the Radius in version 2.0. In this guide, I'll be showcasing my tests and observations I've done to help demonstrate each individual shotgun's strengths and weaknesses. As always, this video is going to be broken into three parts. A 12-gauge ammo guide, general shotgun tips, followed by the deep dive and tier list of each shotgun. Now when it comes to ammo, I can go into heavy detail about buckshot versus slugs, but I don't have to because buckshot on paper is so bad that words can't describe how much of a degenerate it is. In the family of 12 gauge rounds, buckshot is literally the child that only a mother could love. Due to just how ugly buckshot is, it'll be assumed that every shotgun will be running AP. Now in terms of general tips, I have quite a lot of knowledge to bestow upon the audience. First, let's discuss upgrades. The recoil upgrade is only viable on the Spaz and the Saiga, but you don't even need it because in my opinion, the recoil isn't even that bad to begin with. Now, I did test the spread upgrade and can say it does not affect the slugs one bit. However, there is a big fucking difference between the decreased spread and the increased spread with Buckshot. This shit is almost as putrid as the fact that only 9% of you guys watching this video are subscribed. Weight differences between the guns are also negligible as they all weigh within half a kill of each other. The Saiga may be the lightest gun, but when you're carrying just one mag, it becomes the heaviest. When it comes to reloading, you can load everything from your ammo box. I personally didn't even know about this until I started to use the Spaz, but my god, not needing to load every bullet individually into the gun is a true lifesaver. Don't be me don't be silly. With the formalities out of the way, let's begin with the analysis and tier list of each gun. For starters, there are seven shotguns in this game, but technically there's only five. As you can see from the stat sheet, both double barrel shotguns are identical, and the same is true for their sawn-off variants. However, there are staggering differences between the sawn-off and full shotguns. The sawn-offs are twice as loud, have a lower accuracy, half the velocity, and less damage. The first time I used a sawn-off, I swear, every enemy within render distance just came flooding towards me. I literally felt like I was the last girl at a bar still hanging around at 3am. The only pro I can give to the sawn-off is the fact that it is great to handle indoors just due to how small it is. But that's the only pro I can give for the sawn-off, so I'm gonna have to put it in E tier. The full double barrel is just usable in areas up to Podia Factory. This is by design as it literally only has two barrels. My main issues with it is that sometimes you get unlucky and you don't penetrate a shot, you miss a shot completely, or you run into one of the three different types of commando mimics that require three slugs to kill. Now it is a massive buff compared to the sawn offs and it has the potential to kill things at medium ranges, but by design, it's still a two barrel break action shotgun, D tier. Now this is the hard part of the guide, because the last three shotguns are all extremely good, and I personally have trouble choosing between the three of them. So I'm going to rank the easy choice first to solve this problem via the process of elimination. The Saiga. This is your typical video game shotgun, and I say that because it is semi-auto, does the most damage out of all the shotguns, and like every shotgun in Call of Duty, is dog shit at range. But it is a stellar performer in CQC. It's the only shotgun that can use a magazine as well, and you can find 10 round mags for it out in stashes, which I heavily recommend using, as they weigh the same as the 5 round mags, but give you double the ammo capacity. This is a blessing and a curse, as it's the only shotgun with magazines, but now that means you have a mag to repair. It's only a minor drawback, but it is worth mentioning. Highest damage, biggest mag, semi-auto, A tier. Following the meta shotgun, we have by far the most fun shotgun in the game, the IZ-81. It's got a decent accuracy, a super fast velocity, and very good damage. Now do you know what this equation equals? Snooperoofl. No matter where you are, you can shoot at literally everything but you will have to enable virtual stock. As we all know, long range VR shooting is hard, but the devs know this and created virtual stock to save us all. The difference between sniping with and without virtual stock is insane, so I recommend using it for all two-handed weapons. But even with virtual stock, the only thing holding this gun back from being A tier is the fact that it isn't semi-auto. Most enemies need two slugs to kill, so you can't just run in monkey style and pop everything. You must use brain. I used a strat called peak, pop, and pump. You peak the target, you pop the target, then you pump and cover. If you follow the three Ps, you will never die. For the sole reason though of having to use brain, monkey put gun, B tier. Now the Spaz is pretty much just a toned down Saiga as it has less damage than the Saiga and is single round loaded. However, its one difference is the fact that it has a zoomy muzzle velocity. Now I thought, surely that fast muzzle velocity counters its terrible accuracy, right? The answer to that is hell nah. So all I really have to say about the Spaz is the fact that it's literally just a nerf Saiga. B tier. 
Now, if I were to let my bias control this tier list, we are putting the IZ81 and A tier, baby! I had so much fucking fun with this gun, and honestly, using it made me better at the game. It literally forced me to just play slower and more methodical. Coming off of using SMGs only in the last guide, they trained me to literally just be a monkey and run and gun. If you play this game properly with brain, I reckon this thing completely outclasses the Saiga. And that, my friends, is the tier list complete. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Join the Discord with the top link in the description if you want to chat into the radius things, or if you just want to double your cock size. I hope you all have a good day, night, or evening as you continue to monkey brain your way through the exclusion zone. Sears.